Welcome back to Metal Magic. Today, let's talk about back riveting. I'm Paul Dye. One of the things we frequently get asked about driving rivets is why in the world do we drive on the factory head and not the shop head, since it's the shop head that we're trying to form. Well, the answer is complicated, and that's just the way that you do things, but occasionally you'll break that rule and you can actually drive the shop head directly. That's called back riveting. When would you want to do this? Well, sometimes you want to have an absolutely perfectly smooth outer surface, and if you use a large back riveting plate, this is kind of actually a small one, but it's what most back most home builders have. Um, you can use all sorts of things on the on the the shop side, the outside of the airplane, and then drive that shop head directly. You can make a beautiful smooth surface. A lot of times you'll do this on uh, wing skins, or you can do it on uh, tail surfaces, where you want to make that really beautiful smooth surface um, on uh, on flush rivets. So let me show you how you do it. There's there's not a whole lot of uh, of complicated nature. It actually makes kind of sense. You need a back riveting set in your gun, and this is a little spring-loaded doohickey. It's basically a solid. Uh, uh, rivet set with a little capture device which is spring loaded around it. Um, you can back rivet with with a standard bar if you're good enough, but uh, or a standard set if you're good enough, but this really helps you to capture the, the tail better. Um, again, make sure that your gun is is set properly. I do that on the floor or on a piece of wood just to make sure that the pressures are turned down so you're not going to blow this thing up. Um, and then we have a, a little sample piece here, representative of a wing skin and a stiffener that we're gonna that we're gonna uh, back rivet on there. So, one of the things you need when you're gonna do back riveting is you're gonna load up your rivets. Uh, you can do this one at a time, but but it gets kind of tedious. Uh, put some rivets in, in in the row that you're gonna use, and then you're gonna tape them in place. And you want to use back riveting tape, which is kind of a fancy word for really lousy scotch tape. Um, it's, I think, the same uh, adhesive that they use on post-it notes. It's very, very thin adhesive. It's pretty weak, um, but it, it's just a thin scotch tape. And if, if you don't have any back riveting tape, you can use scotch magic tape um, in the meantime. So we're just putting the rivets in and, uh, and, and loading up our line. Okay, so that's all set. And then we're going to put that down on our back riveting plate. Right now I have this set on a piece of cardboard on top of my workbench. And cardboard is flexible and a workbench is flexible. We'll probably get away with this for this demo, but you might discover that there's too much give there and it doesn't want to set well. And if that's the case, sometimes I've actually back riveted on the concrete floor. It just is kind of hard on the knees when you have to kneel down to do it. But a solid table, something to back it up so that it's not moving away. Okay, now I've got the rivet tails sticking up. They're the proper size rivets. And we're going to just go down on top of one and we're going to go ahead, compress the spring, and rivet. A little bit more. And you'll learn that one I overdrove. Um, you'll learn about the right length of time to shoot because you really can't see what you're doing. That one's about right. And now we have driven these rivets and we have a really beautiful smooth surface. Now, of course, I was just doing five rivets, but let me remind everybody again, I didn't have my hearing protection on. You should definitely put your hearing protection on if you're going to do any of this back riveting, uh, especially if you're going to do your entire horizontal stabilizer. So there are things that can go wrong when you're back riveting, and here's an example. Um, in order to do this demonstration, we wanted to rivet it a couple more times. So we drilled out the rivets that we had set. And in so doing, we slightly enlarged the holes. Part of that was when we set the rivets the first time, and part of it was the drilling out. So that when we went to set them again, back riveting, back riveting is very sensitive to oversized holes. The rivet, think of it this way, the rivet shank is sticking up and it can swim a little bit. Once it gets just a little bit off axis, 
the rivet set drives it over to the side and it clinches the rivet. So these rivets are very poorly set because they've tipped over and they're, they're set off to the side. So if you have to drill out rivets, back riveting might not be a very good option to do them over again when, you, when you're going to set them a second time. Once again, thanks to Aircraft Spruce for sponsoring the series and thank you for watching.